Happy to hear what we have to say. Or not. I mean, if you aren't, just pick the next podcast in your queue. Whatever. We won't know. Won't hurt our feelings. Unless you tell us on Twitter. One of these days, I'll get the guts to do an intro. But today is not that day. Our uh, our Twitter handle is binaryjazz.us. No, our Twitter handle is just binaryjazz. Our website is binaryjazz.us. Thank you for playing, Gary. (laughs) Just binaryjazz on Twitter. Yeah, binaryjazz on Twitter. This shirt's bothering me now. (laughs) Because it's not purple? No, because it's the collar stretched out. I didn't. I look, you know, with this long hair and the stretched out shirt and, you know, five o'clock shadow, I look like I need to go sleep. Oh, yeah, you've got the the five o'clock shadow. Right. Okay. Actually, mine's probably more like seven or eight. Let's remember it's a podcast, so. (laughs) I mean, some people might watch the video. I only listen. Even I'm not a big enough fan to watch the video. (laughs) Oh yeah, I'm never gonna watch that. <clears throat> it's happened. There's definitely clicks and there are views. Views. A couple. People people who are, are YouTubing like the topic and then they're like, they never talk about the topic. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean that's totally what it is, I'm sure. It's like they do a search for, you know, uh coruscation and they're like, wait, this this isn't about coruscation and it's also forty five minutes. What the hell? These like people the must, be, must be scientists. I love my content uh, in video form, but in this case, I'll make an exception and just read the dictionary definition for God's sake. <laughs> Interpretive true. dance of Wikipedia. That's what we do here. <laughs> you amazing. We will apply for my next arts grant <laughs> in interpretive dance. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I have a question for the floor. Uh, to what degree is your locality uh, flipping out about uh, COVID-19? Um, not really. Not really. You don't have people in your area, Gary, that are like doing disaster planning and like buying weeks worth of groceries and storing them in a bunker under their house? I guess, I guess no. Florida doesn't have underground bunkers. Absolutely not because of the bunker situation. But also... We already have a bunch of preppers around here because people are crazy. So I don't think that people that are inclined to that would need to do more of that. Um, It hasn't reached like hurricane levels yet where people like panic and stock up. I expect at some point it will. And then I will have to purchase cans of tuna and what other, and uh, and some strange off brand of peanut butter. There will be no bread or the bread that exists will be something that's expired or weird um and you know i think that i I would really love uh somebody to create a banana index i feel like that's like the first fruit that people go for when they're thinking about sustenance i mean like when the way like when the hurricane track shifts the bananas are sold out in my local grocery Hmm. store so i should go just like walk walk in every day and like do a banana count every morning and be like yeah seems like everybody's fine (laughs) the employees are like don't mind that guy. He never buys anything. He's just counting the bananas. <laughs> uh, it's just banana counter guy. It's just right. banana Gary. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I wish I had that, had that nickname as a kid. Banana, banana Gary. Gary. <laughs> yeah. Rhonda made um, banana phones at Scouts this week. They were like learning about safety, you know, like oh. first grade age Scouts. And so while they were talking to a fire, a fireman about how to get out of a burning building or whatever, the assistant and leader taped on um, like a keypad. Uh, so then all these scouts got their banana phone and learned you, know, you press nine, one, one, and the green send button. And uh, and then they ate their bananas for a snack. It was so effing cool. It's so utilitarian. It's so awesome, isn't it? It's great. Um, I don't know how people in Toronto are feeling about it, but I know in my household, we have discussed getting some supplies. But that being said, certain members of 
our household may or may not be wearing a tinfoil hat sometimes. <laughs> um, I, no, but we've, we've also just realized that like, oh, we don't have that many canned goods and we don't like, it's kind of more of a general awareness, I think. And then also it's, it's more like, oh, if everyone's going to go out and stock up at some point, like let's get our ahead of the game and stock up before everybody else. <laughs> Uh, but we'll see. We haven't Annette, like acted on anything yet. We were just talking about it and being like, we don't really have supplies. We're very much like a week by week household. So, I um, I woke up yesterday and I looked at Twitter, looking for D and D stuff as I do, because that's the only reason I go to Twitter anymore. Like I, I honestly like I feel like I should go through my the people that I follow and just unfollow anyone who's not D and D related at this point. Uh-oh. I'm gonna tweet something D and D related. So I well, I mean, involved. yeah, I would I would still follow you, Allison. Um, <laughs> but anybody like serious, um, and I I found like this whole thread, uh, and I'm fairly sure it was like local like Utah type people because it was retweeted by or or responded to by somebody that I know in the local Utah WordPress community. Um, and it was all about like everybody like stocking up their emergency supplies. And to be fair, Utah is super hardcore with like disaster preparedness. It's, it's a thing. Like it's a thing for like lots and lots and lots of families to have like to buy those like disaster boxes with all sorts of like dried rations and, and stuff in it and like a you know month supply of water or whatever. So like that's a thing and I understand that's a thing but there's this whole thing and I was like Pfft. wait and then I was like but wait should I actually be concerned? Uh, and then Aaron and I had a conversation about it last night and I said like what I ultimately decided was like if we get a case in Utah maybe we can think about that stuff but I'm not going to go I'm not going to be the person that goes nuts and like buys a freaking emergency crate. Yeah. Uh, we, there's freaking there's there are disaster stores yeah like you could go to a full-on store that like sells disaster and like this is utah we don't get hurricanes we don't get earthquakes we don't get floods we don't get like kind of giant bears like yeah. what what do you get that necessitates disaster preparedness a zombie I mean, apocalypse i guess they I, get I, the I, end of the world that's what you get yeah <laughs> yeah it's fair you guys yeah me. no i i mean i, I there is a truck that i see fairly frequently on the freeway that's like a zombie apocalypse van and I, I i think they're half serious oh we have one of those the next neighborhood over from us i see them often at the grocery store it's a uh, bananas <laughs> I th- you know what i was always wondering what they were doing there um no they're there it's a i think it's a like the original hummer or maybe an h2 i don't know yeah um, this isn't a hummer, but it's, it's like just, it's just black sort of, sort of a suv yeah has like the zombie apocalypse or zombie apocalypse zombie survival preparedness vehicle, zombie sur- hunter and then there's like a light rack in the top and some box and some other and i'm kind of convinced that they could live in that thing yeah too yeah i'm also convinced that they're never going to need to do that Mm -mm. so i mean unless it turns out unless it turns out that the the actual uh effects that we haven't discovered about this virus is that um the people who have passed uh, away after dying of the virus come back and start eating people's brains in, in which case maybe those zombie apocalypse people are like totally like on point yeah. Do you, do you not think we would have like already seen? I can't believe I'm asking this question. <laughs> Don't you think we do you not think we would have already seen cases of that? I mean, this thing is like coming up on six weeks old now. It's true. However, the uh, undead uh, many, not actually start their many authorities, many health authorities soon? have been underreporting cases and like not. I mean, all sorts of things. So I mean, maybe they were trying to keep it quiet, not send a panic through through. Uh, maybe global, it just hasn't been that noticeable. <laughs> global zombie panic, yeah. Maybe Some maybe they just considered them to be recovered. Oh yeah, they're like they got better. Look yeah, at that. It's, it's a little worse for the wear. A little rough around the edges. <laughs> Someone um, was mentioning to me about like, what was it? Like um, medication availability, and they were like, stock up on all your medications because right. like everything's right. because you're not from- going to be able to go to the pharmacy because the pharmacy is going to be closed because nobody can do anything well and they were also just like supplies wise like everything's imported from china and all this and i was just like i don't know if there's that much validity to that or if that's just like i read a thing from the world health organization that said that if you're getting expecting packages from china or something you don't need to freak out because it's not like the virus can live on the packages in for the that thing. long yeah yeah 
And I was like, right, I don't think feels... my medications are coming from China. I think they're, I don't know where they're coming from, but I guess I just well, assumed- that's your closer. problem. Yeah, I guess I just assumed they were closer. <laughs> this, this feels like one of those books though. Like, like, yeah, it can't survive on a package, except this package happened to be, happened to be sitting like on a pallet with a bunch of other packages. And it was like loaded when it was snowing. So then it froze and preserved the virus. And then when you open the package, like it thawed out on your hands and you scratch your eyeball and <laughs> they can't trace where your case came from. You know, I, I read this book once. I read this book. Yeah. It was assigned reading in high school. No, I didn't read those. <laughs> <laughs> Why would you? Yeah. Uh, yeah. That kind of thing always cracked me up. Like assigned reading in high school. Oh. There, you could always, um, it was always evident as to like what, where the topic was going, you know? So there wasn't much reason to read the book. You seem to know a few characters names and find like a couple examples of um, stuff, you know, that support that. And there's your paper. I and think I sat next to you in high school. <laughs> 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 and you may or may do. not have been asking me lots of questions about the book that I read. <laughs> oh no, I definitely wasn't communicating with people in my class, so that wasn't <laughs> me. I was more like the bell rings and I'm like one toe in the door, you know, class <laughs> starting. Like, I wasn't late, I was here. I always in that conversation with the teacher that you're late unless you are in your seat when the bell rings. So I'd be hurtling through the air <laughs> for that bell finished ringing. I had more important stuff in class. I don't know what it was, but <laughs> but at the time, it seemed very yeah. important. I remember my my strongest high school uh, reading assignment memory is uh, struggling through the Brothers Karamazov. And like I swore, I swore up and down I would never do Cliff Notes. Um, yeah, oh, and that was that that Love was them. the one book where I was like, "Damn, I should have got Cliff Notes for this book." Yeah. Um. I had a dumb one. It took me like 20 years to realize The Great Gatsby was all about the red light, you know? Okay, cool. The green light. Um, green light. <laughs> Look, I'm more of a big picture guy. The light in general, whatever the color light. it was. Yeah. Um, it, was, it, was, it was green? <laughs> in my memory, it was green. I mean, I believe you. I'm but I mean, maybe you, it changed color. I'm certain you were more engaged in the book than I was. I had no doubt in my mind. Um, we had a segment the thing on is poetry. that I, I really liked The Great Gatsby and I read it twice yeah. and I still don't remember it aside from liking it. My grade 10 teacher, English teacher, was like obsessed with The Great Gatsby. So it was like, it wasn't optional reading. It was required reading for sure. Um, the, um, yeah, we had this poetry segment when I was in high school. And so there was a lot of like, read this poem. Like, mm. oh, hell yeah. And so the teacher was like, she was just thrilled with the way I was pacing and reading and emphasis I was putting on words. I'm like, well, dang, this is an easy section. I don't need to understand any of this stuff. I just need to act like I understand it and read it appropriately. <laughs> You're like, I'm a poet. <laughs> Damn right. <laughs> this is actually a great segue into my quiz, Ooh. which may or may not have had oh, anything to, to do with. Embarrassed. High I school like, reading. I feel like we have like the good, the like the 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 well performing students in the class in this call, and then the like, and then Gary. <laughs> and then Gary. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, my motto has forever been "take it till you make it." <laughs> and then you've made it, and you're like, it were all worked out. The problem is, then you've trained yourself that you were always faking it, so there's like never like it. And oh, understand that you solid. have actually made it. So, oh yeah, yeah. I yes. have a feeling you'll both pass this quiz. I'm not. Uh... Oh wait, I should. Uh, I should pull up my scorecard. So the quiz is: Who said it? Taylor huh? Swift or Jonathan Swift? You might know Jonathan Swift as the author of Gulliver's Travels. <laughs> Thank you so much for that. I'm like. Well, I've heard of one of those people. <laughs> and he also and wrote definitely um, Tay Tay. <laughs> he also wrote a modest proposal, I think. Ah. But mostly yeah. Gulliver's Travels. I think which both for, of those were books I was supposed to read, which meant I like, school. <laughs> yeah. knew uh, the I, general I idea. I read neither of those, so this is gonna be great. Yeah, good. Be good. Okay. 
So the first one is, may you live every day of your life. Tay Tay. Hmm. Say Jonathan. Is that the other guy? Jonathan Swift? Is that the other <laughs> it's Jonathan Swift. Okay. All right. <laughs> that one was yeah, Jonathan. John. Come on, that Chris. Sense. That makes sense. <laughs> All right, that's fair. I, I was giving Taylor Swift a bit too much credit. That's that's okay. Um, right about okay. That. Just for clarity, is this, this isn't like a who said it first, though, right? This is like who said it. Who said it. Okay. Because it would always be Jonathan Swift in that case, because he was in like the 17 or wait, 1800s. I mean, I mean, Taylor Swift is a time traveling being, maybe, but yeah, I want to watch that movie. <laughs> Taylor Swift, the time traveler. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, 100. percent It's like the time traveler's wife, except the time. Oh, I was going more of a star. Doctor Who, like a Doctor Who direction. I was thinking uh, that well. that would work too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Or right. Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, actually. Ooh. Yeah. Interesting. Okay, uh, the second one is fine words. I wonder where you stole them. Taylor. I'm gonna go with Taylor as well. Jonathan. Taylor. Oh. Uh, the third one. Uh, just because you're clean don't mean you don't miss it. Okay, that's definitely a T Swift. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Hey, hey. Uh, if a man makes me keep my distance, the comfort is he keeps it at the same time. Wow. Jonathan. Hmm. I would say that too, except the man part is throwing me. <laughs> I mean I, I'll go I'll go with, I'll go with Jonathan Swift because if I'm wrong then Gary's also wrong. <laughs> uh such friendly competition. Yes, it's Jonathan Swift. Okay. Uh, if you're right, Gary's also right. <laughs> <laughs> so we both lose or something. <laughs> uh we are never ever 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 getting back together. Uh, that would be <laughs> Boy, this is a rough one. Uh, <laughs> I wanted to make sure there were some some lobs in there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're like, no, that's uh, from, clearly from Gulliver's Travels. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's from, in the book. From the latter half of Gulliver's Travels. Uh, my mistake. I didn't know to be in love. This one is tricky. Yeah. Because it could be grammatically Jonathan. incorrect. It could be grammatically incorrect because they're the person's really smart. Or it could be grammatically incorrect because the person really isn't. Uh, I, I'm not sure who you're referring to in which spot because I think they're both very <laughs> smart, Chris. I, I did go on the record and say Jonathan, right? Did I say Yeah, that? you did. Uh, I think to be different, I will uh, take another hit and say Taylor. What about you, Gary? He's Jonathan. Jonathan. Jonathan? All right. It's Taylor. Oh, are we tied now? We are tied now. <laughs> that was my secret plan. Not yeah. so secret. Not so secret now. Now we know. No uh, words are the clothing of our thoughts. Jonathan. Jonathan. Correct. Jonathan. Uh, these are the words I held back as I was leaving too soon. I was enchanted to meet you. Um, Jonathan. Taylor. Taylor. Damn it. What song was that from? Um, I don't know offhand, but I can get back to you on that. Because <laughs> I can like sort of hear it in my head, and I'm not sure if that actually means that I've heard that song or I've just had a little too much coffee this morning. <laughs> You're like, I not only Definitely know that song, I wrote that song. <laughs> it would be uh, even better if I heard it in my head and it was um, Jonathan. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. To get angry is like to revenge yourself for the guilt of others. Jonathan. 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 Uh, the last time you saw me is still burned in the back of your mind. Taylor. Taylor. Yeah. Getting your rhythm now. <laughs> <laughs> Do 
You gave me roses and I left them there to die. Taylor. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, kaleidoscope of loud heartbeats under coats. Wow. Uh, Taylor, because the kaleidoscope didn't exist until the 20th century. James. <laughs> Love the analysis. <laughs> um, yeah, Taylor. Uh, every day is an opportunity. If you were like, no, <laughs> no, <laughs> no, kaleidoscopes didn't exist. Yeah. Um, every day is an opportunity to make a new happy ending. I mean, Jonathan. this is just a nice sentiment overall. Jonathan. Okay, if you say Jonathan, I'm gonna say Taylor. <laughs> It's Jonathan. Uh, got a long list of ex-lovers. They tell you I'm insane. Uh, that would be Taylor. Ooh. Um, yeah, Taylor. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, books, The Children of the Brain. Jonathan. 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 Uh, what a sight, what a sight when the light come on, came on. Proved me right. Prove me right when you prove them wrong. Taylor. I can hear Jonathan singing this, but it's Taylor. <laughs> Taylor. Uh, vision is the art of seeing things invisible. Jonathan. I was just trying to parse that sentence in my brain. there. Yeah, I'm going to go the other way and say Taylor. It's Jonathan. Okay. I thought for a moment that the way that was structured would really indicate like something entirely different. Mm -hmm. Well, it's hard out of con. Well, I, th I find it some things to be hard out of context, especially. Um, and the last but not least, you put up walls and paint them all a shade of gray. Taylor. Uh, Taylor. Taylor. Do we tie? No, you got it by one. Ooh. <laughs> that is how I roll. No, um, do you remember, um, it must have been seven or eight years ago now, when like, it's a silly number, like 40% of all music revenue, like, was Taylor's for one year? She has a very large music catalog. Yeah, and there was like, a, I don't remember, I don't remember what it was. Um, Uh, yeah, and it, I mean, it was like a big deal, like Bloomberg Magazine had an article about it, as did Wired, as did somebody else, and her her disruption of the music industry, as it were, at the time, which is a very disrupted industry. Disrupt. That song is called Enchanted, by the way, the one that you asked about. Oh, thank you. I will put that safely in my spot. Add that to the, the old day. Spotify playlist for yeah. the day. <laughs> so we have a couple. Uh, we have a couple early uh, Allison questions. Maybe that can uh, take us through to the end. We're getting actually. Oh no! I don't think we have any shortage of topics here. <laughs> you, can, you can ask the questions, but I feel certain that we can talk until we're cut off. Uh, it's literally, what I do. What do you put in your bowl first, cereal or milk? Cereal. So I feel like uh, I feel like I don't count because I don't <laughs> eat cereal with milk. Yeah, but you eat um, things like grits or oatmeal or cream of wheat, warm cereals. No, <laughs> it's the gluten-free, dairy-free thing. <laughs> I mean, I don't. Yeah, eat but I figured that there could be really. like a, yeah. oatmeal is pretty boring. But you count, Chris. <laughs> No, but I've, I've always I've always eaten cereal dry, like always. Yeah. Always. Well, always so you always. put cereal in first. I, yeah. Yes. You do put anything, anything in second. You just put <laughs> right. it in first. I mean that, but yeah, but then that's that an mean, accurate answer. Okay. Yes, it is. So an we agree. Answer. We both put cereal in first. I just have to. Just that I don't put anything second. in after. It happens yeah. to be milk. I used to put uh, when I was a kid. I used to get like Frosted Flakes and put the and put the milk in so that the milk would then taste like sugar, um, or like cocoa. 
Krispies or whatever and put the milk in so they get the chocolate milk at the end. Are you barking um, at someone that lives here? And and definitely Rice Krispies I would put in for the crackling part, but most of the time I don't. Uh, I never put uh, milk in because it just made things soggy and I didn't like that. Okay. But so also like I think it's one of those things where like when I was younger, my parents or grandparents or whoever didn't give me milk and cereal because I would like flip the cereal bowl or something. And then it just stuck because that was what I got used to. And I didn't like milk and cereal after that. Like the, I, I, I think that that's probably the most likely scenario since I've seen that sort of thing happen in my kids. Yeah. Do, do you remember the, um, the cereal that uh, Calvin eats in Calvin House? Oh, I mean, like the name of it or just yeah, like vaguely. a general? I'm pretty sure it's chocolate frosted sugar bombs. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That sounds about right. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna Google that. Oh, I love Calvin and Hobbes. Tyler is getting into Calvin and Hobbes, or has been in Calvin and Hobbes for quite a while, but continues to read and reread, and occasionally adopts a single strip and tries to share a bit of humor. And I'm like. Aaron, uh, Aaron asked for and received for uh, solstice or for Christmas actually, because it was for my parents. Um, uh, the complete Far Side, Ooh. and yeah. my parents have several Far Side books. He, I mean, being from the Bay Area and Gary Larson's uh, from the Bay Area, like Gary Larson's a big deal in the Bay Area. So, like, I just like, but like. The complete far side is massive. I did not like I was not prepared for like it's it's three like thick books. <laughs> Instead of a shelf, it's like the Encyclopedia Britannica. You just it's have like serious. like I was expecting like like I know that like like his normal collections were like this thick and they were like, you know, whatever. So I'm thinking like, okay, like maybe four or five four of those or three of those or something. But no, it's like twenty pounds and it's it's freaking huge. Yeah. And and my daughter spent like a week like or so uh, reading through every single one. That's so good. Yeah. And then um, there was uh, so we were watching um, this uh, show documentary now on Netflix uh, a few weeks back. Oh um, yeah, do they have new episodes out or no? I don't think they have new ones. Okay. Um, but we just we were just walking, uh, running through it, and so there's an episode of documentary now about a guy who um, is trying to meet Gary Larson, um, and it's all about him trying to meet Gary Larson and not meeting Gary Larson, um, and like um, the satire, of course, is that his wife just gave birth and like uh like he's just abandoning her back in like idaho or whatever and like she keeps calling him and he's like oh no it's great and then he like crowdfunds his movie um so he has all this money and he rolls up in like a tesla and, like, <laughs> and then the movie is nothing anyway and yeah i think jude is cold it's like 43 degrees here today 43 yeah jeez which I mean, for us, is a. I don't even know what to do. Yeah. Go out and build a snow person and like steal. I guess you, nice... I guess you don't have heaters in Florida because you never need them. We do. Yeah. So the the there's a um, uh, what do they call it? I don't know. It's part of the AC. There's a heating element in there. Um, it's electric. It's fine. Um, but you must use the... it like twice. Yeah. Seriously. Oh no, you're out of your mind. I use it like from. November through February, what? March. <laughs> Anytime You're it's like, seven, if it's like a balmy sixty-five. <laughs> like, <laughs> if it, I, it, we, uh, I don't set it below seventy. It, it has to be seventy degrees in the house. I can't handle it colder than that. I don't even think you'd be able to exist in my house. Like not outside not. in Canada, but like inside. <laughs> I feel like you'd just be like, it is freezing in here. <laughs> I have, I have stayed with people, and they're like, you know, oh, it's winter. We keep it at like you know sixty-three or whatever, and I'm like. First off, why is it not an even number? Secondly, no thank you. And I'll wear two <laughs> pairs of socks and a pair of pants and a shirt and a jacket. And I may put my knit hat on from time to time. With no I do like wearing a hat inside. It's something about it. There's certain days where it's like super cozy and you're just like, you don't have mm. to deal with hair. It's great. I mean, prior to this call, I am 
I had my hoodie on and I took it off because I am sitting uh, by the window and the sun has transitioned just past the edge. So my feet are up in the windowsill and nice and warm in my socks still because it's... Wait, let's see what the temperature is in this room. 74. <laughs> Close. 72.7. Yeah. And, yeah, and, and I'm cold. I'm, I don't, cold that's, chilly. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't. Yeah. I don't process. <laughs> yeah. No. I mean, when it's summer, like, we keep the AC set around seventy-eight. Oh. You know, so it gets. Yeah. It's. I mean. <laughs> it's. It gets I don't have control that's like, over our thermostat, so I guess like I when just we sort went, of... That's like when we rolled into the the Airbnb in Florida that we were in, and it was and it was like probably seventy-eight in 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 the in the whatever house duplex whatever and it was like oh my god it's so hot turn that thing down um yeah i think that you know you just sort of get used to like sweating all the time fascinating it's great i love it i can't wait for the heat to return we actually you... we, we had two lovely days this week and now we're going to be in like the 40s and 50s and 60s until sometime next week this is one of those cold snaps we talk about where it gets chilly for a brief amount of time um how do you react to being in like a sauna or like a hot are you just like this is like a day this isn't a sauna i don't know that i've spent much time in saunas because i don't okay. feel like it would be like a big, <laughs> big yeah I, like eh, it'd be a little bit warmer but yeah. i mean the, like it's you know you talk about like people talk about all oh, the dry heat in in vegas right i mean it's a very different thing and yeah, I, yeah. like humidity is uh humidity it's gross but it, but once you like, you know, if you're used to it, you're like, oh, this is normal. It feels, feels good. I, I like those. I like those summer days uh, in dry states where uh, you're outside and it's like, I don't know, 108 degrees, and you you actually feel like the sun is trying to kill you, like the sun <laughs> is actively attacking you. I feel like, like if there's a breeze those days, that like my skin is trying to the, peel off of my skull. That's the right? thing is there's never a breeze. If there was a breeze, it would be fine. But if there's no breeze, it's just the sun is trying to kill me. Yeah. Of course, of course you don't go outside on those days. I was going to say, I was like, I stay inside. Yeah. I, we had, I, this was back uh, probably September. We had a dev join us and uh, it was just an, a, a gorgeous day and I knew the winter was coming. So I filled up the kiddie pool out back and put my laptop on like a stand and I'm sitting there like, you know, I left a shirt on because I wanted to be decent. At all. But so I'm sitting in a kiddie pool with my laptop on a, on a, like an end table thing. And, uh, and this new dev joins and he's like, and we were the first two people there. He's like, hi, I'm new here. <laughs> I'm like, hi, I'm not often in a pool, but. But today. Here we are. Yes. yes. I think you he's were like, in a so hammock pretty... the first time I saw you on a call. Well, that's in a hammock fun. most times on calls yeah. that I saw. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, so second Allison question uh, for the day. Uh, in the remaining four minutes and 40 seconds, would you rather stay at a Bates-style motel that didn't acknowledge the creepiness or a mm -hmm. motel that owned their aesthetic and went full-on murder-themed? Um, I feel like... It's safer than murder theme. I feel like... <laughs> I feel like I've been in, so there's at least one motel that I've been in that looked like the door had been bashed in. Mm -hmm. uh, like there was like parts of the door were damaged. The locks had obviously been like changed. Like there were like pieces of metal like covering what I imagine it was like splintered wood. Like it was legitimately like it looked like the door had been bashed in. And uh, the reparations did not make me feel better. Yeah, uh, <laughs> you were like, "Oh, they've redone it," but it doesn't so really I, matter. <laughs> I feel like I feel like if 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 it was murder themed, um, like or or creepy, a creepy, creepy, but not didn't acknowledge the creepiness. I think I'd be more okay with that because it wasn't like like intentionally trying to like be horrible. Like, mm -hmm. I feel like murder themed might be a little bit more dangerous. <laughs> That's just me. This question stemmed from us watching Psycho 3 last night. <laughs> mm. Yeah. See that. Where I was like, people aren't really giving up on this motel. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, I mean, 
all, not all, but like lots of motels and hotels are just creepy by default. Like, like I can't imagine, I can't remember how many hotels I've walked through the hallway and be like, oh my God, I'm in the shining. Yeah. Uh, you know, <laughs> but that's just like a normal hotel. That's just like <laughs> a hotel. <laughs> I guess it's just the transient nature of it. Yeah. I, there is one, there is one place that we stayed, um, I think it's called the Sportsman's Lodge in LA or Anaheim or something. Um, wow, that's already yeah, it, a great start. I know, it was like something called a lodge seems particularly so. It's, so it was historic because uh-huh. it was built in like the fifties or something. It was all like super Art Deco, and and like but like going down the hall, like the hallways are painted green, like this really weird green, and it just it just like feels creepy as shit. And I feel like that's just a normal. <laughs> like here we are. That's just a normal place that you stay. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> I got nothing else. Those were my only questions. What do you? Yeah. What is the? What is the dress code at the Sportsman's Lodge? Like, is the person behind the counter in? camouflage no. or are they like wear like an orange high visibility no vest? and it wasn't it wasn't that's a sportsman I mean, part of it or yeah, I don't, it, I don't it, know. it is it is Everyone's but, like, in camouflage. but they like downplayed that side of things and they they up uh upvoted the like art deco and 70s chic and like all sorts so like they had like it looked like like the rooms and like the lobby and everything looked like you're in a stanley stanley kubrick film like it looked like you're in clockwork orange uh oh, my yeah. um my weirdest hotel experience would be uh, when I was traveling in China very often. There was this place we went to. I don't know what it's called. It had some really silly English translation. But to me, it seems silly. I don't know. Like something about a bird. Um, and the downstairs looked beautiful. You know, like it was like marble floor. People got on the desk. Uh, uh, were English was functional enough to get us checked in. There was this like sweeping staircase, like circular heading up. And then there was this piano, like a lot of fancy places in China have these auto playing pianos. This one had not been tuned. So it was playing all sorts of stuff and it was out of tune and it was just, I mean, it made my spine tingle. It was just so bad. Um, and then um, we uh, go up to the room and it is a two bedroom room and it is functioning two bedroom room because there are two bedrooms in the room, but they are pushed together. There are no nightstands. Um, and like turn on the water and it's like a horror film, like the clunker, nothing's coming out of the faucet. I'm like, oh, uh, okay, well, this will be something. So I got myself lathered up in the shower um, and I'm like, okay, you know, like, hurry, hurry, hurry. Thank you for listening to Binary Jazz. If you like this episode, you can subscribe to us on iTunes or Google Play. You can visit us online at binaryjazz.us or follow us on Twitter at at binaryjazz. Don't forget that you can ask us a question through the forum on the website or on Twitter. We will read it aloud on the next episode of Binary Jazz.